Sixers fans, welcome back. Look, was I expecting the Sixers to win last night against the Utah Jazz? No. Am I upset that we lost? Yeah, but that's not even what this is about. This is just a culmination of thoughts, a culmination of problems that I have clearly seen within this Sixers organization this year. And this video is for me. I just want to rant about it. Um, I want to talk about the problems that I see within this organization this year. And if you like the video, like the video. Subscribe. Tell your friends. 97 is the magic number, guys. 97 to 1,000. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> First and foremost, I think my biggest knock and my biggest issue and my biggest problem with the Sixers team has been the same for the past couple of seasons. And I know a lot of you are going to hate me for it because there are technically bigger problems for sure. But that being said, this is just a frustrating thing that I've seen. And it's the fact that Fergon Korkmaz is playing at all. At all. He has hit 1-3 of his last 16 attempts. He went 0-3 last night on wide open looks from 3. 0-2, uh, I mean. And Korkmaz is just an absolute negative on both ends of the court. He is, at times, the worst player on our team, and yet he still sees 20 minutes a night. He's putting up a career high of 3-point attempts this year, and he's hitting 29% from 3 this year. 29%. 29%. That's coming from a guy who the first week and a half, two weeks of the season was on fire. And since then, he hasn't been able to hit the broad side of a barn. He hasn't been able to shoot in the ocean with a beach ball. This man can't make shit. He is absolutely horrible at the game of basketball, which leads me into the fact that Doc Rivers may honestly be the, the culmination of my problems with this team. And I think through a lot of things I'm going to talk about tonight, today, um, Doc Rivers will be what I come back to after each point. One, Doc, buddy, how the hell can you not see what's going on with this team? Stop playing Furk on Korkmaz. Just completely remove this man from the rotation. And you know what? The first couple of weeks of the season, I was like, yeah, let the, let the hot hand ride. I completely understand that. But since then, the guy is one of 16 from three and three of 23 from three. Stop playing this man. Give Isaiah Job minutes. The guy blew up during the preseason because, wow, he has playing time. He's actually a guy who has a nice shooting form. He's actually a guy who can confidently hit three-pointers and yet at the same time stay inside of his lane and not turn the ball over one time a game and, and not make constant mistakes over and over like Fergon Korkmaz. Wow, let's put that guy at the end of the bench and not play him a single minute of the game. I don't understand it. I don't understand Doc Rivers. I don't understand what's going on with the Sixers team right now. And it's absolutely driving me up the wall. Play Isaiah Joe. He is a significantly better player to this team right now than Furkan Korkmaz. And if your argument is Furkan Korkmaz is the backup point guard, it's all we got right now. I don't care. I would rather have Isaiah Joe be our combo guard than Furkan Korkmaz see the face of day. I cannot Watch that man play basketball one more time. And this, since we're on the topic of Doc Rivers just being shitty, let me continue. Let me just give you a brief example just from last night, just from recency bias of last night. Joel Embiid has a first quarter absolutely dominates. The dude has like seven of our first 10 points. He's making Rudy Gobert look like the little baby that he is. He's making him look like one of the more overrated players in the NBA in which Rudy Gobert is. And I will stand by that point. You know how many Twitter beefs I got in yesterday? with Utah fans, just basically us telling each other that like we hate each other in like basketball terms. I had a lot of fun. So shout out to whoever the random kid was. Could be 15, could be 85 years old for all I know. I don't know, but it was fun. <clears throat> MB dominates the beginning of the first quarter. He dominates the entire first quarter. The Sixers have the lead. The Sixers look good. What does Doc Rivers do? Doc Rivers takes MB out of the first quarter and doesn't let him see the court again until like six and a half minutes left of the second quarter. I understand how substitution methods work, and sometimes I don't think Doc Rivers does. How can you take out the hottest hand and just completely give him ice-cold behavior on the bench and let Andre Drummond just get absolutely picked apart all night long? From Hassan Whiteside, from Rudy Gobert, from every single pick and roll, it was barbecue chicken for the Utah Jazz in that second quarter and you just let the team get back in the game and of course the game's going to turn around because you take out all of the momentum of the Sixers team and it drives me crazy it's the same thing like it was like a week ago Shake Milton was our leading scorer in the first half blowing up and the guy just didn't play again I'm like dude 
If there is a guy who is three of four from three midway through the second quarter, play him. Play him 35 minutes if you have to. Play that man because he is 14 points, three of five, three of four from three, the only dude scoring, and you're just going to sit him until four minutes left in the third quarter. And then you're just going to expect him to continue his run and his continuous hot ham. Dude, you basically just told him to just take off the night and come back in an hour. It doesn't make any sense to me. Doc Rivers has no awareness of rotations. He has no awareness of who has the hot hand. And it's just, it's so stubborn of his part that he just completely stays and just thinks that he knows best always because I hate to break it to you, Doc. You don't know what's going on. You sincerely do not know what's going on. Another problem is Kate Scott. Obviously, she's the worst. I don't want to talk about it, but she's the worst. Everybody knows it. Nobody wants to say it. Kate Scott's the worst. I am begging, <laughs> just begging for somebody else to just do play-by-play. -play. I mean, these games are hard enough to watch as is. Guys, the last thing I want to do is listen to Kate Scott. She is the worst. Literally the worst. Next problem, Tyrese Maxey right now. The last five games... Tyrese Maxey has a game-high point total of 11. 11. He's done it twice. Three of his last five games, he has under 10 points. And dude, if you go back before Embiid's return, I would be surprised to see Maxey go under 20 points. And just the lack of aggressiveness on his part, the fact that Doc Rivers refuses to play Tyrese Maxey and stagger minutes with him and Embiid and let Maxey kind of run a second unit more is infuriating to me. Doc, our bench unit has legitimately zero offensive motion ever. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing. We give the ball to Shake Milton. We have four guys standing in one corner and we're like, hey, Shake, go do something with five seconds left on the shot clock. And you know, 50% of the time, Shake Milton does do something because he's a really good basketball player. But how about, I don't know, maybe we don't have to have an all five bench unit every single night. How about you give a try and give it a try and, and, and let Tyrese Maxey run the second unit just one time, literally one time. The guy's going to give you 15 to 20 points based off of that alone. We need Tyrese Maxey to be more aggressive. We need him to just be an alpha that we know he can be. But I mean, he's 21 years old playing alongside two dudes who are making $200 million. Tobias Harris is a problem. Tobias Harris has had a bad year. Partially, I am um, going to let it slide a little bit because, you know, injuries. He's had, he had, didn't have a stretch of playing five or more games in the season yet. And now that I think he's kind of back, he's starting to look a little bit better. But, oh my God, Tobias Harris is such an offensive run stopper. It's disgusting. Like, we have great ball movement, and he's a wide-open three. And if I see him pump fake a wide-open three one more time to take two dribbles into the paint and shoot a contested elbow jump shot that bricks off of three different parts of the backboard and rim, I am going to lose it. He has got to be one of the more untradeable dudes in the league. It's just his contract is albatross. He has been playing horribly defensively, offensively. I can't stand it. I literally cannot stand it. I need Tyrese Maxey to be like, this guy sucks. Let me be this number two option on this team. Because it is infuriating watching a guy in Tyrese Maxey that we know has it. Defer to a guy of Tob Tobias Harris who we know doesn't have it. Just based off of the money, I guess, that they're making in comparison to each other. And age and leadership. And I understand Maxey's probably not a leader right now because, dude, he's a kid. He's literally four years younger than I am. <laughs> He's not going to be leading grown men. But at the same time, I think he just at some point this season needs to be like, I don't care anymore. I need to do what I have to do to win this basketball game because Tobias Harris is not it. He's just not it. He's not it. Obviously, um, like I said earlier, our bench unit is zero scoring and Matisse Thibault is a problem right now. He had a really good like minute and 45 minute stretch last night. <laughs> Uh, in the first quarter where he had like a, a steal, a three, a dunk. You know what, dude? Cool. I'm here for him running, cutting offensively, going for dunks. But this man's shot is so broken. And defensively, it just looks like he has taken a step backwards this year. Um, he's so aggressive, and which I love. And that's just, you know, what you have to accept on his part. But he has been fouling ri at a ridiculous pace lately. And it's just like... If I, dude, his man is beating him on the on-ball, one-on-one defense, like, every time. And I'm just 
I'm kind of being like, dude, like, I, I, I don't want, what's the point of playing Matisse Thiebel? And he's going to find his way out of the rotation if he continues to just be completely whack. And, it, and that sucks for me to say because, like, I like Matisse. I love Matisse. I love his vlogs. I think he's a great person. He's a sweet YouTuber. I'm here for him. He's one of the one of the dudes on the team that I would just genuinely want to sit down and have coffee with and just talk to because I think he's a great person. I think he's a really interesting guy. And I like his story. But when it comes to, like, this Sixers fan base, which can be so unbelievably toxic at points, and, and the fact that there are Sixers fans being like, oh, we want to trade Matisse or Tyrese for Damian Lillard. Like, nah, dude. Are we watching the same team? Like, I'm tired of hearing about Matisse Thibault's potential. That man went to four years in college and two years in the NBA. The dude's older than I am. I, I don't think he has a ceiling of what you guys think his ceiling is. Like, I'm just being honest. I, I don't see that. I don't understand. I don't get it. He's not like Lou Dort. It's a totally different situation. He is a guy who just doesn't have it offensively. And that's constantly going to be holding him back and keeping him from being in any conversations for a defensive player of the year. And it sucks, dude. It sucks. But he's just, he is, he's incapable of playing offense at any level. And it's, it's frustrating. Defensively, he still has nights where he completely carries and kills it. Yeah. But they are becoming more and more far and few between this year. And it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. Obviously, my last thing here is the Ben Simmons debacle the Ben Simmons saga, in, in which I was the first person to say that, the Ben Simmons saga. And now that, like, Bleach Report's starting to put out an article, I don't know, beside the point. Um, ben Simmons is a very, it's still an interesting thing. You know, there's 50% of this fan base that wants and demands a trade right now for, like, the Jante Murray and Keldon Johnson thing. And, you know, I would like that. I like both of those dudes a lot. I love Jante Murray. But, there is a 50% of this fan base, like I said, that would say, let's trade Ben Simmons for three role players because that's all we need. That's all we need to be a contender. That's all we need to put alongside Embiid. And then there's 50% of the fan base in which I would belong in that says, I think Daryl Morey's doing the correct thing. I think Daryl Morey is doing exactly what the right thing has been all along. Like he's boosted up and inflated Ben Simmons' trade value to wait for a team like the Portland Trailblazers to just completely explode internally and even if the James Harden thing is available this offseason it's just such an interesting um it's an interesting talking point because I think it's so heated on both ends right now that I I just you gotta trust our Mori dude he is the best at what he does there's a reason why we brought him in I think I would rather start off with a Doc Rivers firing than a Ben Simmons trade though I would love both but there are more problems than that. And obviously this team's not going to be contending anytime soon as long as there's a $180 million blank space in our off in our in our um contracts like that. But you cannot just trade Ben Simmons for pennies on the dollar because we are struggling right now and we're like, we need to win games, we need to win games. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself right now if DeJounte Murray and Kelvin Johnson are the two missing pieces to make this team a championship contender. Because I would say no. I love those dudes. I really, really do. I love the guys like De'Aaron Fox. I love, I love good players. I do. I'm there with you. I understand your frustration. I understand what you're saying. But we are incredibly in a very desperate mode right now as a Sixers base. Uh, we need to trade Ben Simmons for something that we can guarantee talent, that we can guarantee a path to winning a championship. We can't jump into mediocrity again, guys. I will refuse to do it. It will hurt me so much to watch Embiid waste his prime on a mediocre six, seven, eight seed like he's doing right now. That's why you have to go for it. You have to go for it. And if that means trade Tyrese Maxey and Ben Simmons and Matisse Thibel and three first round picks for Damian Lillard, then fuck it. I will do that any day of the week because I would rather take Damian Lillard right now and Embiid right now in his window together than Matisse Thibel and what Tyrese Maxey could be and Ben Simmons. I, that's just the way it is. I love Tyrese Maxey. I've said it a million times, but at a point, guys, we have to stop obsessing over potential because sometimes it just won't Excuse me. Sometimes it just won't happen. Sometimes it just won't happen. You need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of Embiid's window. And if I see one more person saying, Maxie's the future, Maxie's the future. Dude, what future? <laughs> By the time that Maxie is the future, Embiid's going to be old. He, his contract's still going to be on the books and it's not going to be good. 
Tobias Harris is going to be somehow still in the books. It's not going to be looking good. We're going to be the same place we are now. Our best position is to win when Embiid is in his prime. And nobody on this roster right now can help that happen. Nobody. We need to make a big move. And I don't care who the hell is involved in that trade. I don't, I don't care. You have to make it happen. You have to trust in Daryl Morey. We still have a really, really great package. Not many teams can offer a lot of teams for star players what the Sixers can offer for them. You know, think about that. Like the video. Peace out, guys. I'll see you later.